Ahoy mateys, we're jumping into 5.6, skipping a little bit. Um, this is about graphing linear equalities in two variables. So basically what that uh, means is you will be graphing x, y equations, straight lines. However, instead of having an equal sign, we're going to have a, an alligator, greater than, less than, you know, those. Um, so if you understand how to graph like y equals mx plus b, this will be very easy. There's just some slight modifications you have to make. One of the terms that you're going to see big ideas use is a, it's called a half plane, which we'll get into. Um, and 5.7, we're going to be graphing multiple of these on a graph to get a solution to a system of inequalities. But right now we're just going to figure out how to graph uh, linear inequalities. So note time, woo. A uh, linear inequality in two variables can be written in standard form normally. So like some coefficient a's and b's times x and y um, added together will be less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater or equal to a third constant. Um, so that's a linear inequality in standard form. You can also have y equals mx plus b form. And instead of an equal sign, it'll be an inequality sign. So jot that down just so you uh, have a good definition for linear inequalities. And then we're going to jump into some examples. Here we go. So let's say you have the linear inequality 2x plus y is less than negative 3. And the question is, is point negative 1, 9 a solution to this linear inequality? So if you plug negative 1 in for x and 9 for y, is this true or is it false? Okay, let's go through that one. So when you plug in negative one for X and nine for Y, you get seven, which is not less than negative three. Therefore, this point right here, negative one nine is not a solution to this linear inequality. Okay, for B, take a look at that one and decide if two negative two is a solution to that linear inequality. Let's see. When you plug them in, you get eight, uh, is greater than or equal to eight, that is true because eight does equal eight. So this point right here of two negative two is a solution to the uh, inequality. Um, if it were just a greater than sign, then it wouldn't have been. But because it can equal, then yes, that works. Okay, so now we're gonna get into graphing these things. More notes, woo! So to graph linear inequalities, uh, basically what you're gonna do is graph like y equals mx plus b to get the line. And then the only two things you got to do that are different than graphing a regular line is you have to decide if your line is going to be a solid line or a shaded line. So if it's just less than or greater than, it'll be a dotted line because the points along that line don't work. Um, and if it's a less than equal to greater than equal to, it will be a solid line because all of the points on that line uh, will work. So jot these down for your notes. You might want to include this uh, definition of half plane as well. And then let me uh, get this stuff out of the way. If you're a step writer, here are the three steps to graphing a linear e inequality in two variables, which we're about to go over. Okay, here we go. Let's graph y is less than or equal to two in a coordinate plane. So you're going to need, you know, a coordinate plane. Uh, basically, what you're going to do, I'm not going to have you do too much on Edpuzzle because I don't you know, want to make a bunch of graphs and all that. So we'll just talk about this. All right. OK, uh, so you're going to graph it as if it's y equals two, which is a straight line across at two. There you go. If this were y is less than two, we'd use a dotted line. But because it can also equal to this line will be a solid line. So anytime you have a less than or equal to greater than or equal to solid line, if it's just less than or greater than, dotted line. And then the second thing we got to do is figure out, uh, now either the points above this line or the points below this line will be shaded in because all of those points work for this inequality. So one way is you think, oh, well, y has to be less than or equal to two, so it's going to be all these points down here. Okay, and that's true. So you'd shade down here. The other way, a good method, is you pick a point, like zero, zero is an easy one and it's down here. So if you plug in a zero for X and Y, and there is no X, so zero for Y, and it's true, it means you shade that side of the line where zero, zero is. If you plugged in zero, zero, and it was false, 
then you would shade the other side of the line. So here you plug in zero, uh, which is a good convenient point. You can pick any points you want. Uh, you get zero is less than or equal to two. That is true. So the side of this line where zero, zero is on needs to be shaded in. There we go. So look at that, make sure it all makes sense. We'll move on to the next question. All right, so let's graph this in a coordinate plane. So one thing you might wanna do first is get this into kind of y equals mx plus b mode. So get y by itself. Remembering that if you ever divide or multiply by a negative, you'll have to turn that sign around. Okay, so in this case, if you get y by itself, um, you don't have to turn anything around. You just add x to each side, divide everything by two, and you'll get this, y equals one half x plus one. So that's what you're gonna graph on the line. And you're gonna have a dotted line because these points on this line don't actually work uh, because it's an inequality that's only greater than this. Okay, so it's a dotted line. If you're not sure why, make sure to ask me in class. And then you could plug in a point like zero, zero um, and see if it works or not. And if it you plug it in and it's true in this thing, then you'll shade down here where zero, zero is. If you plug zero, zero in and it's false, you get a shade above the line. So when you plug in zero, zero, you get zero is uh, greater than two. That's not true. Therefore, this point down here isn't a solution, which means all these points up here have to be solutions. So therefore, the top of this line will be shaded. Okay. So take a look at that. Make sure that makes sense. And then the last thing is a story problem. So you're going to have problems like this. So you can spend at most $10 on grapes and apples. Grapes cost two fifty per pound. Apples are a dollar per pound. I'll wait till that announcement's done. Thank you. And it's done. Um, and then uh, let's first come up with an inequality that states that this, that you have at most $10 to spend. All right, let's see what you came up with. So the cost per grapes times the amount of grapes plus the cost for apples times the amount of apples has to be less than or equal to the amount that you have. So hopefully you got that. Oh, wait, well, I guess they kept the dots in there. So 2.5x plus y is less than or equal to 10. So then you can get y by itself. You'll get this equation right here. Uh, because you can spend $10, okay, you'll use a solid line when you graph this. And there you go. And then we have to decide if we're gonna shade here or shade up here. So you can plug in any point. Um, so like zero, zero is always a good one. So if you plug in zero, zero, you get zero is less than or equal to 10, which is indeed true. Therefore, this is the side of the line that you're gonna shade in. So it's all the points down here, which means that any combination of points in this shaded area will be less than or equal to $10. If you pick any of these points of combinations of uh, grapes and apples out here, that's where it's more than $10. And then this line, any point along this line is where it's exactly $10. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. If you have any questions while you're working through it, let me know. Good luck, I will see you in class. Arr!